The simulation suit has three primary technologies. The one uh, that's most significant, of course, is the RFID tag technology that Cardionics has developed that correspond or works with their SIM scope. And so the RFID tags are placed at certain points on the body that would be normal points for a doctor with a stethoscope to listen to do various medical diagnosis. It's called auscultation. And so at various points on the body, they could listen to the heart. They might be able to listen to digestive tract and various things like that to, to determine a quick, you know, top line cut at, at the status of a patient. The other technology that's in this suit are ECG posts that we embedded into the fabric and we've run uh, lines down to the control pack so that, uh, that those signals can be controlled remotely to uh, simulate different kinds of conditions. And the third technology in the suit is a new technology that, that's being developed right now uh, and we call that the pulse point. And essentially think of it like a brake line in a car. There's a long line of hydraulic fluid and then when you add pressure at one end, it delivers pressure at the other end. So we essentially have a pulse pump in the control pack and it delivers pressure to that tube, but then at certain points along the pathway of that tube where human pulse points would be, we have a very flexible tube section. So that area can flex, whereas the other tube sections don't. So if someone can actually, with their finger, touch this garment at those points and feel a very realistic pulse. And we felt that that, that fluid pulse was a lot more realistic than a mechanical type driven pulsing uh, device that we would create. So those are the three primary technologies. This is the uh, final product here, all put together. Um, you have an overlay shirt that covers everything up. Um, if you wanted to get to the ECG, all you have to do is just pull up the shirt to get to the ECG snaps, and you just snap on your ECG leads here. The shirt also covers up some of the cabling, which is the, here's the earpiece or earbud, so the SP can uh, get cues from the, from the instructor. Um, there's three places that you can place the control monitor, or the tech pack that we call it. Um, there's a place in the back, some hooks on both sides, right and left, that you hook that on. Or you can just lay this down if it's in the way. So yeah, this allows you to cover everything up, look realistic as possible, and you can just auscultate right through the shirt with the uh, SIM scope, and uh, still feel the pulse too as well. The uh, SIM scope, all you have to do is just press any button to turn it on, and then um, the SIM suit will then tell it what the condition is gonna be, so it then automatically assigns the sounds, and then you just put it on, and then um, place it over the uh, particular areas you want to auscultate, and it will start playing those sounds. So I can listen to the aortic and so forth, or the breath, and it plays those sounds that you hear. So these are the underlays that Mark and Jean actually uh, put on and marked the placement of where the anatomy was that we needed to integrate. This is an example of the 3D sketching that we did on the life-size mannequins um, where we marked the spots and we used these templates and draped tissue paper over them and marked exactly where the tech would need to go. Um, and also we drew shapes around that and then we determined what kind of shapes were actually working with the body and um, how we could experiment with the different tech coming in and out of the shirt and where the tech needed to go. From here we moved on to the final prototypes where we re further refined the shapes and, and placement of the tech. When we started this project, uh, it obviously required fabric and that's not my forte. I'm more in electronics and the fabric was, is a little more complicated so I uh, um, reached out to Stephen Umbach. He's also helped us with the uh, SIM shirt, which is, uh, kind of, I guess you could say it's like the SIM suit. It's the very er first version where it just had auscultation. And he was able to uh, structure the suit in, in a way that it's cool, and fits well with the body and conforms to the body well and able to integrate all the technology that we needed integrated into it. So Stephen Umbach was a great, great asset. The SIM suit comes with some software and the software allows you to change the conditions. The actor who's wearing the suit can uh, obviously act their condition, but the suit also allows them to present those real conditions to the uh, student. The uh, software also allows them to change those conditions on the fly. The, the, the overarching idea or concept for our product was we wanted to have the technology a little bit separate from the garment so that the technology could be 
almost like the hood of a car. You could open up the hood of the car and you see the technology and you can access it all. You can replace it, maintain it. In the past, with the SimSco, we used to uh, rely on the Institute's uh, wireless uh, access points. The SimSube design, we decided we're going to make it the access point. So the actual the tech pack actually has the, everything logs into it. So you don't have to rely on any Institute uh, infrastructure for that to work. So one of the great advantages of, of this suit, of course, is that you can combine the benefits of like a medical mannequin, something that has a lot of, of technology, uh, simulation technology built into it, with an actual human uh, patient actor who can, who can then coordinate his or her uh, actions with what the, the output that the suit is generating. And so you get a very realistic uh, response. It's, it's great for training and, um, and, and, and confirmation of doctoring skills um, in, in that environment.